This is the Creality CR30, otherwise known as Naomi Wu's 3D print mill. And no, the title isn't clickbait, nor is the thumbnail. This machine turns filament-based 3D printing on its head, quite literally, and as a result is capable of some incredible feats. These radical design changes, however, also result in new limitations and obstacles to overcome. So, in this video, we'll be checking out the CR30 and covering what you might expect should you decide to get one. Let's get started. To begin, I'd like to get three things out of the way. First, this machine is a pre-production unit sent to me free of charge from Creality for purpose of review and testing because, secondly, you can currently back this machine on Kickstarter. Kickstarter is a route to market I personally don't agree with, especially from such a large company like Creality due to many campaigns in the past failing to deliver, but this machine is unique enough to justify a crowdfunding campaign, I suppose, to gauge market appeal. But if you decide to back this printer to lock in the lower Kickstarter price, you do so at your own risk. And it's not my fault if anything goes wrong. Kickstarter is not a store. Finally, and this might be a bit of a surprise to some, but this is not the first 3D printer of its kind. In fact, the CR30's development wouldn't have been possible without a collaboration between Creality, Naomi Wu, and Carl, the creator of the White Knight Belt Printer, a fully open source 3D printer from which this machine shares a lot of DNA. It would also be remiss to not mention the Black Belt 3D Printer, a commercial belt printer which has already been on the market for some time and was the original inspiration for Carl's machine. Even though my review unit is pre-production, it came impeccably packed with decent instructions. All I had to do was attach the Core XY head unit to the base and fasten in place the two supporting arms, which gives this machine incredible strength. This machine is huge and dense compared to something like a CR10, and it feels very well engineered. I don't keep packaging for 3D printers, but I just have to keep this little bit of history. Look, it's Naomi on the box. I love it. If you're familiar with Creality, then many of the components and design choices here should be familiar. The printer is engineered from V-slot aluminum extrusion with V-rollers for X and Y, and the hot end is identical to an Ender 3, save for a variation in the cooling ducts. It takes 1.75 millimeter filament driven by this metal Bowden extruder, but damn, is that Bowden tube long? Like, it's not as long as the Bowden tubes on the B2X300, but it's long enough that it needs some mighty retract settings and some filaments may be a bit stringy or hard to manage depending on your settings and what you're trying to do. The interface is a standard clicky wheel LCD, nothing to write home about here, and the printer itself is running silent stepper drivers and a 32-bit control board from Creality. So let's move on to the biggest and most obvious design feature, that belt. The belt assembly on the CR30 is immense and hugely over-engineered, but it kind of has to be. The belt is under incredible tension to keep it as flat as possible and to drive it the machine uses a stepper motor through geared reduction and a final belt reduction. The print belt is supported in the print area by a heated aluminium plate and then further down with another plate and finally there's this little guard at the front on the idler side where the prints peel off as the belt advances. Keeping this belt running true with correct tension and first layer accuracy is everything on this 3D printer. Yep, just when you thought you'd become a master at leveling your bed on more traditional 3D printers, this thing comes along with no less than eight points of adjustment, which you have to get right if you want your prints to succeed. For belt level, you have these four leveling points, though they're supposed to come level from factory, so you shouldn't really have to touch them. Uh, but for first layer height, you have to adjust the Z-axis optical end stop and find a good level through basically trial and error. You hone the machine each time and you complete test prints till you're happy with how much the first layer is dug into that print belt. Finally, you have the actual belt tension. And in my unit, the print belt and timing belt were so tight that the print motor was overheating and losing steps on longer prints. 
Adjusting the front tension points also plays a role in the belt's tracking if it's tracked straight or it bumps up against the sidewalls, which also affects print quality. And the smallest imperfection here will cause the belt to slowly migrate left or right. In my tests, I found that this print surface sticks prints down very well, but they have a very rough surface and the black coating is coming with each successive print. This belt, however, won't be the same as the one shipped in production units as Naomi is already on the case, they're changing it, but in her words, you've got to review what's there, so here it is. With general construction out of the way, we can take a closer look at that incredibly unusual axis configuration. The print volume of the CR30 is 200 millimeters by 170 millimeters by theoretically infinite in the Z-axis. This machine isn't infinitely tall, what am I talking about? Well, in this case, the Z-axis is the belt, and the Y-axis runs at this 45 degree slant, resulting in a total possible height of 170 millimeters. It's actually not all that big, really, smaller than an end of three in two directions. But how infinite Z can you really print with this machine? Well, Carl put his pre-production unit through its paces and printed an I-beam a ridiculous six meters long continuously. You can check out his time lapse here, it really is quite trippy to watch. He even put the GoPro on the beam as I was printing. And for printing really long prints, you do need to support them as they start to sag unsupported, but Creality does have a roller attachment you can use, and it's sold separately. So what that means is this printer can produce models significantly longer than itself, continuously. And the eyes of prop makers all around the world light up. In 2014, I figured out how to rip game assets from Skyrim and 3D printed a Daedric Dagger in three parts on my very small 3D printer at the time, which I had to glue together afterwards. However, this Daedric sword is one meter long and it was 3D printed in two parts on the CR30. This is just one half. It took 19 hours to complete, but thanks to the miracles of editing, you can see the finished sword here. And what's more, you could also do them sequentially without intervention because each print reaches the end of the belt and they naturally detach and fall off. I'm not one to use the term killer app lightly, but yeah, for any kind of cosplay work, swords, staffs, armor and the like, this machine was born to do it and it wouldn't take much finishing at all to bring the sword up to scratch and a heck of a lot less finishing required than printing it in six or more slices. You can of course also choose to print regular sized objects one after another. As the belt rolls forward, the previously completed models eventually detach and you could catch them in a wedding parts bin beneath. There's no functional limit to how long you could run the printer like this, churning out parts. However, currently the size of the G-code file you use, I feel would be the limiting factor. What I would love to see in future is some kind of integration with a print server, which automatically slices and prints incoming models, because that would be sweet. However, it isn't all sunshine and lollipops. As groundbreaking as this 3D printer is, there's some quite severe compromises made to give it this ability. They mostly come from the unusual 45 degree angle at which the Core XY assembly sits. And as such, the angle at which 3D prints are sliced. When you think about a standard filament based 3D printer with Z axis going vertically, a 3D print's first layer is the base of that model and it builds up layer by layer in Z until the print is complete. Each extruded line is supported by the one below it and you can get away with a certain amount of what's called overhang, roughly 45 degrees or so, before it becomes too extreme for the layers of molten plastic to hold their shape and the print starts looking bad or fails entirely. Okay, so got that. Well, now throw all that information out the window because this 3D printer plays by a whole new set of rules. Okay, yes, the roughly 45 degree overhang capability is still there, but due to that tilt, it means that a vertical wall facing the Z direction when you start printing is roughly the steepest overhang this machine is capable of in that axis. That means that with popular test models like the Benchy, the bow looks horrible. Even the slight angle on the rear of the boat is too severe. This machine simply can't reproduce it. It's trying to lay filament in midair. In fact, details designers often add to models to make them print better, such as a 45 degree chamfer on the underside of parts results in the printer attempting to print basically in midair because each layer makes contact with the bed sequentially at that angle. 
Yeah. <laughs> the rules change though, depending on the axis. For example, X seems to have the same overhang capability as regular 3D printers, but it's when you're facing the other direction in Z that things become really strange. This print looks like it should be impossible, but for this printer, it's a cakewalk. The machine isn't attempting to print a beam with one huge bridge at once, but instead in small 45 degree slices, which self support. Gravity will definitely have some effect. I suspect very long horizontal sections where it may suffer some sag, but years ago I tried inverting a 3D printer and found that gravity had a negligible effect on overhangs. Negligible, that's, that's, I can't speak. Also keep in mind that the print surface isn't all that stable. Uh, so that will also limit how far you can push these unsupported 90 degree uh, overhangs. All of Creality's test prints are clearly aware of these limitations, going so far as to arrange a scaled up Benchy on this ridiculous angled block to make it print properly, but it really does print models better at these weird orientations. Which is frustrating, because almost none of my usual testing models are suitable, at least not without significant geometry changes. Except, it seems, the Geyer Anderson cat. Normally, you would have to support the cat's head as a significant overhang, but not here. And to top it all off, this print is entirely hollow. As a result, there's a few gaps in the surface, but overall the finish is great at 0.15mm layers, all things considered. Some models, it seems, almost by chance are better suited for the CR30, but most models will not print properly and will need significant geometric or orientation changes. By the way, Joel also shares his thoughts on these geometric limitations in his video, which you should definitely check out here. As you can probably imagine, slicing for a 3D printer like this is also completely new, and currently the only options rely on heavily modified Cura. It really does feel like stepping back in time when 3D printing slices were a buggy hot mess. Initially, I was using Creality's provided slicer, but I wasn't getting great prints, so I moved to the Black Belt version with a modified profile from Carl, and it's working quite well, all things considered, but it has a long way to go, and it's really conservative with only a 35mm per second print speed. In the slicer, geometry of certain internal angles tends to get ignored, and you can't do support from build plate only, which would be really handy for quickly angling existing models to that 45 degree sweet spot to become suitable for this machine. And I know that slicing technology will only get better for this kind of setup, but I do really hope that it happens quickly. And for example, I'd love like Prusa to step in with a Prusa slicer integration in future because that would be awesome. Okay, conclusion time. Again, this is a pre-production unit from Creality, which they're currently crowdfunding. What you get will differ from this machine because they're constantly tweaking and improving the design. But even at this stage, it does feel quite polished. The possibility of printing objects longer than the printer itself is absolutely gonna be enough for many people to pick up one of these. And the Kickstarter price of around 700 US makes that added functionality a no-brainer for prop shops and cosplay enthusiasts. However, this is not a baby's first 3D printer. There's no way I could recommend a machine like this, as specialized as this, as your first or only 3D printer. It has complex calibration and tensioning to master, and those geometric limitations which will require an intimate knowledge of 3D modeling to overcome. Uh, if you're brand new to 3D printing, I would recommend just pick up an Ender 3 or similar for 200 bucks, have some fun, and then when you're ready, come back to this because even at the 1K USD retail price, it's gonna be a steal compared to other options when you consider the functionality it does offer. Lastly, I wanna to touch on the incredible work Naomi has done orchestrating the existence of this machine in collaboration with Carl and Creality. Carl's belt printer, the White Knight, is fully open sourced already, but Naomi has put a bounty on this printer becoming fully open sourced as well, if the Kickstarter campaign reaches $5 million in funding. Not sure it's gonna get there, but it would be pretty cool if it does. And also Naomi has put so much on the line to bring this machine into existence, I mean, 
Her face is on the box and she constantly fights dumb decisions out of her control. So while Crowley has made mistakes, I want to say thank you, Naomi, for looking out for the community as you always have done. You can find out more info on the CR30, the Naomi Wu 3D printer mill in the description below. And if you found this video useful, maybe consider subscribing because this is certainly not the last you'll see of this printer on this channel. What's really cool is when new tech like this starts becoming affordable and accessible, that's when we start seeing people discovering really interesting new ways to push it. And I really look forward to that future. Thanks for watching guys, bye.